It is uh, 10 p.m. I just made scalps for dinner and my whole place smells like scalps now. And I'm about to put glossy eye makeup on my face just to set the scene for you. All right, so today the day has come. I am finally testing some Glossier makeup. So from what I can remember, I think I've tried three Glossier products in the past, no four. They're Milky Jelly Cleanser, The Balm.com, Boy Brow. What's the fourth? I don't think I've ever tried to film this late. Boy Brow, Balm.com. <laughs> I'm just repeating the same thing. Oh, the priming moisturizer. So I am gonna talk a little bit about Glossier as a brand first and kind of just like some of my thoughts. So if you're not interested in that part and you just wanna see the makeup applied, I'm gonna put the timestamp right here. But I wanna say maybe like three or four years ago, I listened to a podcast episode from, it was either NPR How I Built This or Girl Boss. I'll find the exact episode and link it down below if any of you wanna to listen to it. But it was just interviewing the founder and it was really interesting. Glossier is kind of supposed to be like a girl on the go, very approachable, easy, quick, natural, minimal kind of makeup. That's how I view it. There's definitely a Glossier vibe. Like they have their branding down. And to be completely honest, before I went on Accutane, when I had cystic acne, I just never felt like I could relate to that kind of look. It never really felt like it was something that was doable for me or achievable. I don't wanna put anyone in a box as far as what they can and can't do with makeup. If you have cystic acne, there's definitely still ways that you can get kind of a no makeup makeup look. I did do a video on that if you wanna see how I did that back when I had acne. But to me, the Glossier kind of look is kind of like you're already a model in a sense. Like you already have that model skin. It's just like very minimal, maybe like a little bit of glitter on the lid and, you know, very sheer coverage and a glossy lip. It's just very natural, minimal makeup, which now I definitely have more of an appreciation for than I did even like a year ago. And I've definitely been like playing around with more cream products and lighter coverage and that kind of look. And I do like it now. I just want to kind of acknowledge that if you're someone that sees that and you're like, I totally don't relate to that, I get you. <laughs> I was there. You can use makeup products in different ways. So that's the cool thing about makeup is that even though it's kind of like marketed in a certain way, you can usually tweak it to kind of get a similar look. So I probably could use, that would be a fun video. I tried to do like a very dramatic look with Glossier makeup. Let me know if you guys would want to see that. So that's kind of why I haven't felt totally inclined to try a ton of Glossier products up until now. I just haven't been interested in that kind of makeup as much as I am in this moment. But also there's something about a brand that is so hyped up. Fenty Beauty kind of has a similar effect to me where because it has such a like cult following and the brand itself is so hyped up, I don't know, some of the products to me almost get inflated. I'm so curious if someone did blind testing where a Glossier product or a Fenty Beauty product was in like just plain white packaging, no branding anything, what people would rate it because some of the products I've tried from, I mean, it, this happens with any brand. This is turning into a whole rant, but apparently I get very passionate about this at 10 p.m. at night. I think you could do that with a lot of brands. So basically what I'm saying is I'm gonna be reviewing these products, how I try to do with any brand, which is just as makeup, whether it's drugstore, high-end, whatever it is, it's makeup, let's see how it is. So if you're excited for this video, that was a very long intro. You can give this video a thumbs up. If you're new here, I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Let's put some glossy makeup on my face. All right, so I purchased a bunch of products. I am gonna use a couple that I already had, like the priming moisturizer, so that's what we're gonna start out with. I have almost a full face. There's a couple products that I didn't purchase and I'll get into why when I get to that point, but it's pretty much a full face. So let's start out with the Glossier Priming Moisturizer. It says, buildable hydrating cream. It says, after cleansing, massage dollops of this cream into your face using upward strokes up and out. Apply more where needed to prime skin for makeup and or life. So like I said, this one I have used a few times in the past and it basically just feels like a lightweight kind of lotion. It doesn't say it's fragrance free, but I don't smell a strong fragrance or anything. It feels very lightweight when it goes on, but then it kind of like sinks in. It just feels kind of like a standard moisturizer. Like if you picture CeraVe, it basically just feels like a moisturizer and there's no SPF in this or anything. All right, so I am actually very excited to try this. It's the Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint. I got the shade G11, G12, I believe is the lightest shade, but I got this one because it said lightest with a neutral undertone, which is typically what I am. And I just kind of looked at the model photos that they had on there to see what shade I might be. The packaging of this and kind of the whole idea reminds me a lot of MAC Face and Body, which I recently did 
a video on. I'm still testing this, but I'll link that video in the eye down below. But this is basically just supposed to be like a sheer coverage skin tint, exactly what it says. It's not really supposed to give you any kind of coverage, but as soon as I saw this, I definitely thought of MAC face and body immediately. They actually don't have a whole lot of products, which I kind of like because it makes me think that they really focus on the products that they do have. And it seems like Glossier is very connected to their customers. Like I was actually looking for one of their glitters because I remember wanting to purchase those like a couple years ago and I couldn't find it on their website. So I kind of, okay, this fly, did I just catch it? No. So I was kind of like Googling to see what happened to the glitters and I guess they actually discontinued the glitters because their Glossier community was not happy about the environmental impacts of the glitters, I guess. It seems like they listen to feedback, which is nice from a brand. Wow, I'm really shaking this. Okay, we can probably go in. So it says to use your fingertips. And I'm just gonna kind of do the same thing that I do with my face and body. Wow, this is very sheer, like super sheer. Definitely more sheer than MAC face and body. Looks like it has a bit of a glowy finish. I'm gonna try and add a little bit more Maybe I didn't squeeze enough out. And I am kind of curious if this is buildable too. And then I'll do my forehead. It feels totally different than the MAC one. The MAC one kind of sets down, like has a foundation feel. This one feels more like a, a bit oily. It definitely just has a slipperier feel. Very, very sheer. Can't really tell if that did anything. I'm gonna put a side-by-side -side clip in right here so that you guys can see if there's a difference from before, but I can't really tell. Maybe it toned down the redness on my cheeks a little bit. I'm not expecting like, you know, coverage out of this. It does say it's sheer. So let's do a little bit on my forehead. Yeah, it definitely has a dewy finish, making my forehead for sure dewier. I kind of wish this had SPF in it because I was gonna say I would probably just throw this on if I was like going on a walk and I wanted a little tiny bit of redness covered up. I think that's probably like the only way I would normally wear something this sheer. So the Glossier Stretch Concealer is another one that I'm just very excited to try because I've been into these kind of concealers lately, like the Becca Color Corrector. I love using just like potted, kind of more brightening, light-ish coverage concealers on like no makeup makeup days where again, I don't wanna powder it. I just wanna have it brighten up my eyes, but look very natural and not like concealer. So I'm excited to try this. This is their Stretch Concealer in the shade G12. It says it's a buildable concealer that covers everything from dark circles to blemishes and redness with a dewy glowy finish. Okay, that's exciting. Comes in 12 shades. So it says it's supposed to cover blemishes and redness. So I'm gonna try and use this and like spot conceal on some other areas as well. But first let's try it underneath the eyes. Feels very creamy, just blending my finger in there. So again, this kind of product is one that I would wear if I was just doing a light coverage kind of day. I probably wouldn't wear this kind of concealer on a day where I'm doing like full blown makeup and under eye powder and all that. I'd say it's very light coverage. It is brightening though. So it does look brighter compared to this side. I am very curious how this would cover blemishes though. To me, it doesn't quite look like that would be the case just based on how it's covering my under eyes. Comment down below if you're a Glossier fan, if you have never tried Glossier, if you've tried a couple of their products, I'm curious. So I do like that it feels very creamy. It feels very lightweight. I'm gonna try to apply this on some of my redness, even though this shade is a little bit light for like a face spot concealer for me. I think it's a good under eye concealer shade, but I'd probably have to go shade up if I really wanted to use this to conceal, you know, other areas on my face, but we have it, so I'm gonna use it. Yeah, I just don't really see this covering blemishes. I would call this a light coverage concealer. So I'm just kind of bringing this over my cheek area to try and just conceal a little bit of that redness. I mean, it's sitting on the skin nicely as far as just like the texture of it. It's very undetectable on the skin. It does definitely have a glowy, dewy finish like they say. I have a little blemish right here. So let's see if that covers it. I mean, this is a very tiny ones, not like full on. Can't tell if face and body is breaking me out or the Dior backstage primer. I definitely have more like little under the skin things. Okay, so I feel like my nose is kind of like dark now compared to the rest of my face. So I'm just gonna 
add a touch to kind of highlight the face a little bit. I like it. I think that if I was trying to conceal on my face and spot concealer, I would just use my NARS potted concealer. But for underneath the eyes on very light coverage days, I would use this if I just want something super natural looking and just brightening. Yeah, if you like light coverage and you have dry under eyes, I think you might really like this one because it does look very nice and moisturized. Now let's move on to Brow Flick. This is one of their newer products and I've heard really good things, so I'm stoked to try this. It's their Microfine Detailing Pen and I got the shade Black the Darkest one. I've been loving the look of like the brush stroke kind of brows. So it looks like there's a nice fine tip on here and it has a brush tip applicator, not a felt. Ooh, that looks like a fine line. Okay, I'm excited. So I'm just gonna start and kind of flick up. Okay, that is probably one of the finest brow pens I've seen that is actually like fine when you use it. Some of them get kind of thicker as you press down. This one is like an actual fine, fine pen. For those of you who are new here, I have microbladed brows, obviously. So when I shape my brows, I usually like to add like a little bit of strokes to the top mostly. I feel like that zit is already coming through. So obviously if you don't have microbladed brows, it's much easier to achieve that like feathery kind of brow look because you have just less concentrated, you know, pigment right here. I'm curious how this would last because I'm basically just like erasing certain parts and it's wiping right off. That could be because it's going on top of this like kind of more oily finish of the skin tint. That's typically how a lot of brow products work is if you apply it when you're like face is kind of more powdered or if you have a foundation that sets down, it typically is harder to kind of rub off versus this, which makes sense. All right, it's kind of not coming out of the very tip now for some reason. It's much more faint. You can't even really see it now. Here's right when I started and here's now. So I'm gonna have to keep playing with this. I don't like that the tip definitely is getting like less product out now, which is what I liked about it right away because it was so fine. So I feel like one of their kind of most raved about products are definitely their cloud paints. So these are basically cream blushes, which like I said, I've been more into lately. I got the shade Dusk, but then they also popped in a few samples of Storm and Puff. So I really like these kind of peachy tones right now. I don't know if I'm gonna do a bronzer today. I guess we'll just see where the look takes us. I love the packaging of this. Most cream blushes, you only need a tiny bit, so I'm just gonna start out with a little, build more if I need it. But let's start out on this side. Oh yeah, definitely don't need a ton. Ooh. Oh, I like how these feel. It is kind of like setting down a little bit. My freckles are really coming through today. I don't think I'm gonna use bronzer today, maybe I will. Cream blushes, I like to bring in a little bit further than normal, because it almost gives you that like sun-kissed natural kind of look. I like this shade a lot. It's like peachy, but definitely wearable for my skin tone. It doesn't look like I have really a blush on. It looks just like super natural. I'm gonna open these samples just so if any of you at home are curious about the shades, you can see. So here is Puff. It's like the pinkier one, a pink kind of coral. They do dry down a bit, which I like for cream blushes, not too fast to where you can't like blend it. And then here is Storm. So this one is definitely the darkest. That one felt like it dried down a little bit faster. I actually think if you're around my skin tone, that probably could work. Now for highlight, I have this highlight concentrate. It's called Nightshine, I think. It's in the shade Pale Pearl. Oh, it looks like a little nail polish. Ooh, that shade looks pretty. Oh, okay, it has a little like dofa applicator. So I guess you could put this directly on your face or you could put it on your finger and then put it on. I'm, just, I'm gonna put it directly on my face. That's what I would do. I'm gonna start out with a small dot. I don't know how intense this is. It says it's a concentrate, so I'm guessing fairly intense. <gasps> oh my God. Oh, hell yeah. That is beautiful. Um, yeah, I'm in love. That has zero glitter. Something I look for in cream highlights are no glitter, that like really reflective kind of wet look almost, and something that's easy to blend out, and that was all three of the above. Was that three things? I think so. It feels very, very easy to blend. Kind of just like melts, melts away as you blend it. That looks so freaking beautiful. I mean, I just have to highlight my entire face now, okay? I'm gonna do my nose, do a cupid bow. This maybe could look good on the inner corner. So far, the cloud paint and the highlighter are definitely my favorite. I can't get over that. I love that this doesn't have any glitter in it. If there's an airplane out there right now, 
they will probably be able to see my highlight. Also, I'm sure my neighbors are like, what is that chick doing with bright friggin' lights on at 11 p.m. now? Oh my god, I love that. I know my face is very dewy right now. Don't blame me. Blame Glossier. So I'm gonna do the Lidstar Glistening Eye Glow. Kind of like liquid eyeshadows. I got the shade Fawn. It looks like a pretty cool toned brown. I'm kind of debating if I should put on an eye primer with this. It just says dab onto lid and blend with fingertip. I'm gonna use a brush to kind of blend out the edges and then decide what I kind of want to do with this. Definitely kind of shears out as you blend it. Okay, maybe that wasn't the right choice. Use my finger. I'm curious to see if this dries down because right now it's feeling a bit creamy like it definitely feels like it would crease so we'll see if it kind of dries down there i'm not sure how i feel about that this is definitely giving me like quite a grungy undone kind of vibe it seems to be pretty patchy and just like transparent i might try and put this on the lid let's do that and see how it goes because i have the brown i don't want to get the brown on here i'm going to take a clean finger I'm not loving that. This is one of those products that I do think if this was just in blank packaging and you didn't know the brand, it would be very questionable. I also don't like that it doesn't seem to be like drying down. I just feel like this would crease like crazy. So because I do have an eyeliner from them that I want to try, I don't want that to just like transfer all over the place because I would never put an eyeliner on. This is basically like wet. Not just where I applied that highlight, the brown, it's like wet. So I'm gonna go with the ColourPop Bare Necessities palette just to add some powder so that when I go in with the eyeliner, we don't have a total situation happening. So we have their Pro Tip Brush Point Liquid Eyeliner. I think when I was reading the reviews on this one, people said it was like a very fine tip eyeliner, which I'm excited for if that's the case. Oh yeah, that looks nice and small. Okay, I'm excited. Very fine point for sure. I was initially gonna go for a little bit of a smaller wing, but that's okay. It's definitely not super black compared to other liquid eyeliners I have. It looks more of like a dark grayish color. That wing got way bigger than I was intending. These are definitely not even. So I didn't try their mascara because based on their reviews, they said it was like a very natural kind of soft mascara, which isn't usually what I like or go for, but let me know down below if you guys think I would like their mascara. I'm gonna go in with CoverGirl exhibitionist instead. I'm not loving the whole look. I like particular parts. So the cloud paints, I'm pretty sure you can use on your lips and your eyes. I'm gonna try it on my lips. So we're gonna go with the shade Puff, which is that like pinkier one. Rub it in. Mm. Ooh, that's pretty on the lips. Ooh, I love that. I would almost just buy that Puff shade just to use on my lips. It actually feels like nothing on the lips. It just feels like a matte like nothing feels like i have nothing on my lips those are all of the glossier products i bought on my face i have a couple that i'm very excited about i would say my top like number one that i'm most excited about you can probably guess is the highlight i'm curious how this wears on top of full-on foundation or on top of powder certain liquid highlights i can't use on top of powder it just creates like a weird texture and then others are totally fine so it just kind of depends the cloud paint in dusk is definitely my second favorite if you're just looking for an extremely natural looking cream blush i mean it it's very pretty and like I said, I am gonna buy that other shade because I love a pinky blush, but also I, I just really like that on a lip. So if you're looking for a product that you could also use in two ways, maybe if you're traveling or something, you just wanna bring one product for both your lips and your cheeks, this can kind of do both of those things. And then everything else is where it kind of goes downhill for me. For me, the Glossier Skin Tint just doesn't do a whole lot of anything and I would rather use a product that has a tiny bit more coverage just like light coverage so that you can sheer it out and kind of have more control. This I just think essentially gives your skin a glow and in that case I could just use my SPF that has a glow or a glowy primer. The skin tint definitely has more of like a slippery kind of transfery feel to it. It definitely just feels like a little bit oily. The brow flick I kind of feel torn on because again I I liked this at the beginning and I've seen people use this where it just looks amazing. Just didn't like how it kind of stopped coming out the tip as well. The priming moisturizer, I just think you can all around skip. I've talked about this product before, but it's it's basically just 
a lotion. And then the pro tip eyeliner, I do like that this has a nice fine point. Again, my wings are just wild tonight. Don't quite know what happened. Some eyeliners don't apply well over metallic shadows. So maybe that was the case with this one. Maybe this does better if you aren't going over metallic shades. But I like how fine the tip is on this one. It is easy to control. It's a very nice height. Like some eyeliners like this are too long to where it just bends too much. This one, hard pass on. I feel like I could get this from Dollar Tree. I've actually tried better Dollar Tree makeup than this product. So this one I would just pass on. Maybe the other shades of this are nicer, but I just don't like how this stays wet. I don't like how kind of sheer it was. And it just is one of those products that I just find to be a little bit pointless. I definitely think there are better liquid shadows from the drugstore. So I hope they bring their glitters back in like a different form or something because I definitely wanted to try those. I think those were kind of like their more standout eye product. When I was looking on their website tonight, I also saw that they had a, I think, new SPF. So I do want to try their SPF. Let me know if there are any other products from Glossier that you think I should try down below. What are your favorites? What are your least favorites? Let me know down below if any of these products worked out for you or if they didn't work out for you, I am always curious. But if you're gonna buy one thing from Glossier out of everything I tried tonight, I would definitely say the highlighter. I'm like stoked on life about this, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up. I'm gonna have all the products I tried listed down below in the description box. If you're new here, I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Sift time. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye. What bird is out there right now? Is that a thing? I've never noticed birds at night. Anyways. Mm -hmm.